Well, hello there. I'm your Poke Professor. You can call me Colin or the Poke Prof. I study Pokemon and the Niantic Company as a profession. Welcome to the world of Pokemon Go. In this episode, we'll teach you everything you need to know to get out and go catch Pokemon. Now, if you don't know anything at all about Pokemon, you might want to check out our Pokemon 101 before learning how to go. And like a Pokemon, Go will evolve over time, so we'll keep updating our guide to cover new developments. Check the video description to see what version this guide is good for and if there's any new Pokemon Go 101s. But first up, what is Pokemon Go? Well, Pokemon Go is an app for iOS and Android that lets you catch Pokemon in the real world. It's a new type of game from Niantic and the Pokemon Company to get us out of the house, playing with friends, exploring, and having new fun adventures outside. In order to play, you'll need a cell phone or tablet with an active data connection and GPS. I'd also recommend a cell phone battery pack, since it'll mega drain your phone faster than a vile plume. Now, after downloading Pokemon Go and verifying you're old enough to play, you'll get to pick your permanent name and avatar. As of now, you can't change it, so pick carefully. Once you're in the game, to move your character, you'll need to use these, or these, or these, or those, or, or that, if you live in the future. Because Pokemon Go is a real-world game, so to find Pokemon and supplies, you need to move in the real world. The only way your character moves is when you move. Your phone, or Pokedex, will serve as a portal to the Pokemon world. Let's take a look what you'll see in there. There's a circle that flows out from you. Where that circle stops before it resets and starts again is your maximum action range. You can click on things further away, but in order to interact with them, they'll need to be within the range of that circle, which is about 120 feet wide in diameter. At the top of your screen is the compass. If you want your map to turn whatever direction you're facing, press the compass. If you want to turn the map by yourself, click the compass again. It'll switch it between static and dynamic mode. At the bottom left, we have your mini profile, which shows your avatar, current level, and progress bar to the next level. Clicking it, gives you your full profile with stats, badges, team, and Pokecoin balance. At the bottom right, we have a list of most of the nearby Pokemon. If you haven't caught at least one of the Pokemon before, it'll appear as a shadow, and you'll have to play a game of Who's That Pokemon to guess what's nearby. If you're hunting just one, you can select just that Pokemon by clicking on it. The number of footprints next to the Pokemon shows you how close it is. So if you're walking and it gets more footprints, you know you're headed in the wrong direction if you're trying to find that Pokemon. In the center is the Pokeball, which gives you your main menu. At the top, this has game settings and tips with my professor, Willow. The center has a Pokedex that lets you see all the Pokemon you've caught, along with descriptions when you click on them, and a shop where you can buy items using Pokecoins. Pokecoins can be obtained using real money through the Google Play or iTunes Store. You can also get Pokecoins for free every 21 hours, once you've hit level 5 and have Pokemon at gyms. We'll cover that in Pokemon Go 102. At the bottom of the main menu is Items, which lets you see all your items in your backpack. You can use certain items anytime, like Potions, which heal hurt Pokemon, Revives, which will revive Pokemon that have been knocked out, and Incense and Lures, which will actually make Pokemon come to you. You can also delete items that you don't need, because your backpack can only hold 350 items unless you use Pokecoins to buy extra space, and even then it maxes out at 1,000 items, so you'll want to keep track of inventory and get rid of items you don't need. The last menu item is Pokemon. In here, you can see all Pokemon you currently own. The bubble in the bottom of the screen will let you sort them by most recently caught, favorites, their number in the Pokedex, their HP, with Pokemon at 100% HP, listed first by amount, and then hurt Pokemon, their name, or by number called CP, or combat power. Clicking on a Pokemon lets you see its information, make it a favorite, change its nickname, power it up, evolve it if it has a second or third stage, or to transfer it to Professor Willow. It also shows you where you capture the Pokemon, in case you want to capture more, or tell a friend where they can find that Pokemon. Now, in order to power up, or evolve a Pokemon and raise its CP and HP, you'll need the amount of Stardust and Candy listed next to the action. The more time the Pokemon's been powered up, or the higher CP it has to begin with, the more it costs, so it can get very, very expensive quickly. You can see your current amounts of 
Stardust on hand and Candy listed here. You get Stardust and Candy when you catch, hatch, or transfer a Pokemon. Candy is specific to each Pokemon and is always based on the lowest Pokemon in the evolutionary path. So if you have a Pidgeotto, it will use Pidgey Candy because Pidgeotto is the second evolutionary form of Pidgey. Now, transferring a Pokemon means you're giving the Pokemon to Professor Willow to study and you'll never get it back. But in exchange, you get one candy for that Pokemon. So it's a good way to make Pokemon you don't need useful because you can only hold 250 Pokemon by default. So transferring Pokemon to Professor Willow will help you make sure you don't hit your Pokemon cap. So how do you get Pokemon in the first place? Well, you can either catch them or hatch them. To catch a Pokemon, you'll need to walk around searching till one appears, or use an incense or lure to make one come to you. You can tell areas that are more likely to have Pokemon because they'll have what look like leaves rustling about. Once the Pokemon appears, just click on it. This will bring up capture mode. You can either choose to capture Pokemon in the real world using the AR or augmented reality button, which turns on your camera, or in the Pokemon world. There's no difference between the two aside from what you see while capturing it. To catch the Pokemon, you need to toss the Pokeball at the bottom of the screen towards the Pokemon. Press down on the Pokeball and flick it with your finger or stylus. You need to be accurate enough to hit the Pokemon with the Pokeball in order to capture it. There's also a circle that appears around the Pokemon and starts shrinking once you press down on the Pokeball. The smaller that circle is when you release the Pokeball, the greater the chance you'll catch the Pokemon if you hit it with a ball. You can tell how hard the Pokemon is to catch by the color of the ring. Green is easy, yellow is medium, orange is hard, and red is harder than Brock's Geodude after some defense curls. Pokemon are also saucy little creatures, and they'll try to duck, dive, dip, dodge, and duck your Pokeballs, or even hit your Pokeballs away. So it may take several tries to hit them. When you succeed in hitting a Pokemon with a ball, it will try to capture it, the Pokeball will wiggle back and forth three times, then finally sit still if you manage to capture it. But sometimes Pokemon will break free. If you miss capturing a Pokemon, you can try tossing more Pokeballs until you either capture it or it pulls a Forest Gump and runs away. Now, if you catch a Pokemon, it will get 100 experience points, three candies for that Pokemon, and some Stardust. If it's the first time you've ever caught that type of Pokemon, you'll also get a bonus 500 XP. Plus, if you had really good aim with the Pokeball, you can get between 10 to 100 bonus XP. Now, Pokemon can also hatch from eggs. In order to get eggs and supplies like Pokeballs and potions, you need to visit Pokestops. Pokestops are the cubes floating on top of pedestals on your map. They're often found around art, historic markers, and places of local interest to your community. To get items from the Pokestop, you need to get it within your action circle, then click on it. Just swipe the picture to make it spin. You can tap or swipe on all of the bubbles with items in them, but if you want to save time, you can also just hit the X at the bottom of the Pokestop, and you'll still get all of the items. If your bag is full, you won't be able to get any more items, but the good news is visiting a Pokestop also gives you 50 XP, whether or not you get items from it. Now, Pokestops can only be accessed once every five minutes, but there is no limit to how many times you can access them every day. You'll know if a Pokestop is unusable because it will be purple instead of blue. You'll usually get between 2 to 10 items from a Pokestop, and when you reach higher levels, you can get new items from the same Pokestops. We'll talk more about those in 102. Now, once you get an egg from a Pokestop, you need to hatch it. Under the Pokemon option in the menu is eggs. To hatch an egg, you have to walk a certain distance with the egg in an incubator. Each egg tells you how far you have to walk. And the further you have to walk to hatch the egg, the more stardust and candies you'll get when it hatches. Put the egg into either your orange unlimited use incubator or a blue incubator, which will break after hatching three eggs. Now you can use multiple incubators at the same time, so load up as many as you can and get walking. But Pokemon Go only counts walking when the app is open and when you're traveling under certain speeds. Now we don't know exactly how slow you have to go for it to count, but let's just say that even a Rapidash doesn't walk faster than 10 miles per hour. Now, once you've reached the distance for your egg, you'll get a notification. Your Pokemon will hatch, and you'll get lots of candy and Stardust along with a sweet random Pokemon. Now that you've got all the Pokemon, you can use them to battle at gyms. 
But to do that, you first need to reach level 5. You gain levels by getting experience points, or XP, through catching and evolving Pokémon or visiting Pokestops. Once you reach the required amount of XP for the next level, you'll automatically advance and your XP will reset to zero for the next level. So as of right now, focus on getting enough XP for level 5. We'll cover things like how to battle and take over gyms, catch Pokémon better, and higher level items in Pokémon 102. So once you get close to level 5, stop back and check out that video. And make sure to subscribe, since we'll be giving you more of the best Pokemon Go info, tricks, and tips before anyone else. In the meantime, your very own Pokemon adventure is about to unfold. A world of exploration and adventure thanks to Pokemon Awaits. So let's Pokemon Go.